Right, let's go to Birmingham. In October, the CEO of the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute, Andrea Taylor, uh, announced that Angela Davis was going to receive the highest honor of the Institute, uh, the Fred Shuttlesworth Human Rights Award, quoting, saying, quote, she is one of the most globally recognized champions of human rights, giving voice to those who are powerless to speak. And, of course, the award is named after the pastor who led the civil rights demonstrations in Birmingham, uh, who was instrumental in tearing down Jim Crow there. But now a different tune is being sung, and Angela Davis is not going to get that award. In fact, the gala, the annual gala where she was supposed to receive it, has been canceled completely. Why? Because of complaints after uh, she was being announced, largely from the Jewish community, in Birmingham and from across the country. Who is saying that? Well, Birmingham's mayor, Randall Woodfin. Uh, before I read his statement, though, we need to put, I, I, we need to read the actual statement, folks, uh, of the Civil Rights Institute, because actually it makes no sense whatsoever to me, uh, their particular statement. Uh, and so here it is. Here we go to my iPad, please. Uh, in September of 2018, the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute's Board of Directors selected Angela Davis to receive the prestigious Fred Shuttlesworth Human Rights Award at its annual gala in February 2019. In late December, supporters and other concerned individuals and organizations, both inside and outside of our local community, began to make requests that we reconsider our decision. Upon closer examination of Ms. Davis's statements and public record, we concluded that she unfortunately does not meet all of the criteria on which the award is based. Therefore, on January 4th, BCRI's board voted to rescind its invitation to Ms. Davis to honor her with the Shuttlesworth Award. While we recognize Ms. Davis's stature as a scholar and prominent figure in civil rights history, we believe this decision is consistent with the ideals of the award's namesake, Reverend Shuttlesworth. We regret that this change is necessary and apologize to our supporters, the community, and Ms. Davis for the confusion we have caused. We will move forward with a keen focus on our mission to enlighten each generation about civil and human rights by exploring our common past and working together in the present to build a better future. The associated gala event scheduled for February 16th at Haven has been canceled. Ticket purchasers will receive a full refund. Okay, the problem with this statement is it doesn't even say who complained. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say what remarks or comments that they use to justify rescinding the award. In fact, we called the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute today. No one answered the phone today. <laughs> we wanted to find out the specific criteria to receive the Fred Shuttlesworth Award. Nobody answered. Alabama.com, AL.com, they have been trying to reach the board chair, the board CEO, I'm excuse me, the Civil Rights Institute CEO. None of them are talking. But Birmingham Mayor Randall Woodfin is. This is his statement. Quote, as I consider, what do you say? As I consider the controversy over the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute's decision to honor Dr. Angela Davis with the Fred L. Shuttlesworth Human Rights Award and the subsequent decision to rescind that honor at the protest from our local Jewish community and some of its allies, my overriding feeling is one of dismay. I'm dismayed because this controversy might have been avoided entirely had it been handled differently. I'm dismayed because, as has been the case throughout Birmingham's history, people of goodwill behave reflexively rather than engaging in meaningful discourse over their differences and seeking common ground. Here's the issue. Davis is an outspoken supporter of the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement targeting Israel's treatment of Palestinians. That's a no-no for many Jewish groups in the United States, and they're doing their best to, to deny people with that point of view a chance to speak. Joining us right now is Roy Johnson. Uh, he's a columnist with AL.com, the only black columnist in the entire state of Alabama. Uh, and uh, Roy, he, here's what's just, just, uh, just nuts to me. I, I, I got a notice about this uh, on Saturday. Um, and what is utterly confusing is that, and again, I'm reading, I'm looking at their statement. They don't say who complained. The Civil, the Civil Rights Institute doesn't say on uh, this close examination of her statements in public record, okay, if you're going to rescind the award, have the guts to say what she said that you object to. 
You've been trying to reach them. Any luck? Well, you started right at the core there. You talk about somebody having guts. I mean, it's interesting that this award is named after someone uh, who had the courage to stand up uh, to those who tried to bomb him his own house. Fred Shuttlesworth's house was bombed three times. He was attacked as he tried to take his daughters to school and sent to the hospital. A man who displayed courage and, and you know, fittingly, the award is named after him. And yet uh, the people who have been entrusted with that award uh, showed no courage in this instance in not only uh, rescinding this award, but then not having uh, the temerity to uh, come out and let us know exactly why. What parts of her record all of a sudden after two months did not fit the criteria for the award? I spoke to uh, people who were intimately involved with uh, Fred Shuttlesworth, who knew him well, uh, and they adamantly denied that uh, you know this would fit the ideals uh, that Fred Shuttlesworth espoused, as the uh, BCRI board uh, noted. Uh, they contradicted that totally and said uh, this is something that showed that not only do they not know Fred Shuttlesworth, uh, they certainly don't know Angela Davis as well. And, and what, is, what is crazy to me is for the Civil Rights Institute to all of a sudden go quiet. Okay, you don't make a public announcement that you're going to honor Angela Davis. And also, for folks who don't know, a woman who is from Birmingham. <laughs> right. Okay, so this is, a, this is a daughter of Birmingham. And so to not have the guts to announce why you're rescinding the award, but then also this idea that, well, it doesn't fit the criteria. Okay, where's the criteria? Sh show me then what's the criteria uh, for the Fred Shuttlesworth Award. Does the criteria say you can't criticize Israel? No, Roland, this is a catastrophe because certainly she would not have been the first <laughs> honoree of the Shuttlesworth Award to be critical of Israel. Danny Glover has been critical of Israel. Uh, Harry Belafonte, last year's recipient, has been critical of Israel. So why now? Why Angela Davis? She would not have been the first recipient to make critical statements. And we're talking about the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute. Not only is this an institution uh, in a city that is ground zero for change in America, but is a place where people from around the world come and discuss human rights, not only and, and learn what happened here and try to take it back to their own cities, their own states, and their own countries uh, to try to emulate the lessons and try to have dialogue. Uh, the Civil Rights Institute has tried to bring people together, uh, and they've undone all of that with this just catastrophic decision. The process was terrible. Uh, it was done behind closed doors. It was rushed. Uh, they have yet to reveal what the vote was on the board. I have put in a, a Freedom of Information request to get the minutes of the meeting so I could find out not only what the tally of the board was, but who voted for it. I understand that many of the African-American board members abstained from the vote, wow. uh, which to me is, wow. is just as abhorrent as, as voting for it. So uh, we're still looking into this. It'll be interesting to see the fallout. Uh, there's been a lot of criticism of the board chair. There's been some criticism of Andrea Taylor. And I think the, the next few days are going to show, uh, reveal a lot more about how this decision was made and why it was rushed to be done so fast. And, and for folks who, and um, uh, I tweeted out your column earlier, I'll send it out again. So they had a call late Friday night. They Friday went, at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. 4 o'clock. nobody is supposedly paying attention. 4 p.m. on Friday, you have a call. It's not open. They go into executive session. That's where they vote. Come out, announce the decision. We don't, even know, we don't even know what the vote total was. Uh, and then there were a couple of uh, non-voting members um, who were not on there. And first of all, as somebody who is on a board of directors of a non-profit, even though that they are, they are non-voting members, you, a board can allow anyone they want into an executive session conversation. And those two members, including one of them as the mayor, were not allowed to be a part of this conversation, correct? Absolutely. In executive session, voting members have to be there, but ex officio members who are non-voting members can or cannot be there. They were not invited. The other one that you did not mention is Odessa Walfalk, who is another civil rights icon here. Uh, she is someone who was a uh, elementary school teacher during the Children's Crusade, and so she can tell, she tells us plenty about what went on during that Children's Crusade, and I understand that she is actually a friend of Angela Davis, and so she was not invited to be part of that conversation and part of that vote either. So the two voting, two non-voting members were not there. Uh, they voted on Friday night, and I didn't find out about it until about 7 o'clock Saturday evening when the Facebook event popped up on my phone and said that the event was uh, deleted. And at that moment, I said, uh-oh, something's going down.
Uh, I understand that others still plan on inviting Angela Davis to Birmingham to honor her. Have you heard anything along those lines? There are a number of people who have reached out to her, uh, churches, uh, other organizations that are trying to bring her here either on that date, uh, I believe it was February 26th, bring her here for that date or a subsequent date. So uh, stay tuned to hear more about that and see if she uh, does decide to accept one of those invitations. Uh, well, uh, certainly keep us abreast. Uh, you know, I, I would really love for somebody else to actually uh, throw an event mm -hmm. in a gala, invite folks actually uh, to, uh, to purchase tickets, uh, and that money actually go to social justice organizations who are doing the work today, women's groups who are doing the work today, uh, because this decision by the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute uh, it is weak, it is meek, it is impotent. Uh, and then for them not to have the courage to come out and publicly discuss it shows to me uh, how weak they are. And I would not be surprised if a whole bunch of people who are black uh, say, if that's how you want to treat Angela Davis, we're going to wash our hands of your institute. Uh, and feel free to go have other the people who want to tell you what to do uh, then uh, continue to fund you. And it just boggles my mind. It's so unfortunate because the BCRI does do so much great work. Uh, and Andrea Taylor, in her three years year here, has rebuilt the infrastructure, has, has changed the museum, has given it a more global uh, audience, and, and more and more people are coming to the Institute. And yet this one event, this one decision, uh, threatens to really undo all that, and particularly losing the base of support right here in this community. It boggles my mind that they did not see this coming, that they did not see the uh, reverberations from this, particularly locally. And it just calls to mind those people who are concerned about a changing Birmingham, about uh, whether outside forces are coming in uh, to take over the city, if you listen to, to some. Uh, but this decision and the way uh, it tr was transpired, the, the pressure that came from outside forces, I mean, imagine you telling another organization that they can't honor whom they want to honor. Absolutely. I mean, that, that's what this, uh, you can certainly have a conversation. You can hear their grievances. But at the end of the day, if this is my organization and this honoree resonates with my audience, while I respect your opinion, I'm still going to move forward. This board did not do that, and this board is likely going to pay in a number of ways. All right, Roy Johnson, AL.com. We appreciate it. Thanks a bunch. Thank you, Roy. I want to go to my panel here. Um, look. If you want a, an example of well, you know, where people freedom. say folks who are Jewish telling black people what to do and controlling black people, hello, exhibit A. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is this this, this to me is crazy. It's, and 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 not only that, even if they disagreed with her position, um, the institute has decided. Mm -hmm. yeah. They've decided. This is what happened. You don't find your own freedom. Yeah. This is what happened. You depend upon outside sources for uh, resources and and uh, you know to advance your your own agenda. Um, I think I think one thing that white America, non-black America, has to understand and learn is that there is a unique black experience, and with that unique black experience comes reverence for figures within the civil rights movement, within and figures that have played unique roles within the advancement of black people in America. Mm -hmm. Some folk that may be controversial to non-black people, like an Angel Davis, like a Louis Farrakhan, mm -hmm. you know, to conservatives like a Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton, as crazy as that sounds. But that's something that white America has to learn and has to cope with. I mean, these are people that we'll never turn our back on because look, that's all we had at, at, at some point. At, well, at but, point. But, but to the point that Roy made, Harry Belafonte has been yeah. very clear where he stands. Mm -hmm. He was honored last year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Danny Glover, so many others, and these are people who are still on uh, the battlefield today uh, fighting these issues. This to me, is, and again, th here's the other piece, okay? You wanna make the decision? Okay, fine, make the de decision. But don't, don't put out some pissy ass statement like they did <laughs> that was bland. Oh, we looked at her comments in public record. Which comments? Which yeah. public record? What, like, so, like, say, have the guts to say it. And I would say, Andrea Taylor, you're the CEO. Don't run and hide. Don't sit here and not return phone calls and not return emails. Have the guts to come out and say, this is our decision. 
This is what happened. This is why we did it. And we stand by our decision. The board chair have the guts. The board members have the guts. What you have here is an institution that is absolutely weak. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, and I would even put more of the onus on the board because frankly, the way a lot of our organizations run, this sounds like this is completely of the board's doing. I doubt the CEO was involved with... But the CEO well, is, but, is a part of this. I, I mean, she should, actually, she should answer questions, but I would say I would definitely go after the board, the board chair and the board, because they're the ones who made this decision. And here's the danger in letting other people decide who we honor, okay? The, the, the bottom line is we have, as you mentioned, we have our own distinct history. And because of our distinct history, we have a particular... I would say resonance with understanding what it feels like to be oppressed, no matter who the oppressor yeah. is. And so that is why you have a lot of African Americans, including myself, who are very, very sensitive to the oppression and the violence that our Palestinian brothers and sisters are facing right now. And if you have other people who are willing to fund your silence, you are not doing your duty. Uh, as an organization that claims to honor and represent civil rights you, and claims to represent and honor human rights, you are not doing your duty not only to stand up for your own people in terms of Angela Davis and the community that you represent in terms of being able to uh, sort of highlight our heroes, but you're also discounting the very legitimate beliefs that a lot of us have that maybe resonate with those of us who, with some of those who are not, you know, in your, in your favor as it, re, as it relates to your funders. You have to be proud enough and you have to be strong enough in your ideals to remain consistent in those ideals, even in the face of threats that you might be receiving. And ref the fact that they didn't even mention in that Im initial statement who complained shows me that they were embarrassed, yeah. shows me that they were cowardly, and shows me that they knew they were wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, here, uh, first of all, here, go to my iPad. Uh, here are the board members of the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute. Uh, Mike Oatridge is the chair. Walter Bodie is the first vice chair. Janice Kelsey, secretary. Thomas L. Wilder, Jr., the treasurer. Doug Jones, immediate past chair. Not sure if that is Senator it's Doug Jones. He's about, I believe to, it is Senator Doug he's about to get a text from me right now asking if that's him. <laughs> uh, Jeffrey Bayer, Isaac Cooper, Bean Edwards, Michelle Elrod, Rosalind Houston, Danny Markstein, J. John Oros Jr., Jonathan Porter, Cameron Vowell, uh, uh, and then, of course, uh, Odessa Woolfolk, Chair Emerita. Uh, again, she was one ex officio member. You have Andrea L. Taylor, President and CEO. Then you have Mayor Randall Woodfin, who's ex officio. Uh, and so, um, and then, of course, uh, yeah, that is the uh, the Doug Jones, mm -hmm. who is United States Senator. So, uh, y'all y'all can go ahead and comment. I'm about to send him a text to see uh, what his thoughts on this. Go ahead. He probably already resigned after he got elected, so he's going to say he had no part in the decision. No, but I just want to make sure that no, no, he, he right wasn't thing. he wasn't on the phone. Yeah, just <laughs> <laughs> but I think, but uh, you know, it would be nice, Roy. Um, he's doing his. Uh, uh, and for Freedom of Information Act, mm -hmm. he should also try to get those donors yeah. because yeah. then he can do a matrix of who's contributed and then it would be obvious who put the pressure on the organization yeah. to change their decision. I agree 100% with you. Um, but, but I think it comes, we have to circle back to um, for our organizations to thrive and to be successful and to be 100% independent, you got to fund your own freedom. Absolutely. You, gotta, you, have, you have to develop but, your own donor base. But, you have to. Right. And, and, but with that, you also have to develop the backbone to say, hey, you know, if this is our history, this is what the literally literal reason why this organization, this, this museum, this institute exists is to preserve the memory and spirit and history of the civil rights movement so that generations that may not have lived through it can learn from it and apply it to situations of oppression down the line. Right. You know, you cannot cave to oppression. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, and of course, I mean, you know, th this is, but for, to exert that influence, this board, if they want any credibility, they're going to have to have the courage to come out and say, this is why. Mm -hmm. they, if they, because not only you receive the award, you cancel the event as well. And it's going to hurt the future events. Oh, no, no. It's, look, look, first of all, I can tell you right now, as somebody uh, who has frequently gone to Birmingham, uh, who has visited, uh, visited there, in fact, when we were last in Birmingham, we broadcast uh, my show from there. Uh, and uh, we've done, we, when I did ESPN, we did it from right in front of the Institute. Uh, until they answer these questions, uh, I can tell you right now, uh, I have no intentions on visiting the museum. Mm -hmm. 
uh, on uh, doing anything with the museum because this to me is an abomination mm -hmm. that you also are unwilling to have an open conversation mm -hmm. about why you did it mm -hmm. and who are the people who put the pressure on you. Yep. Okay, that that actually so so if so I would advise y'all at the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute, you might want to actually be real open and honest and transparent with people, or this is going to get uglier. It's going to get a whole lot uglier because people are going to be demanding answers. And don't think for a second this is only going to be a Birmingham thing because the story is actually going to get bigger. Because I only we're, we're going to keep talking about it here, Roland, Roland Martin Unfiltered. Then guess what? Y'all are going to be the focus of my Tom Joyner commentary on Wednesday. Hmm. Seven fifteen a.m. Eastern. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all might want to tune in. <laughs> you want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RollerMartinUnfiltered.com.